Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all uh, to today's uh, class. In the last class that uh, we discussed various aspects of the Ireland Claisen rearrangement where the uh, geometry of the enolates uh, played a very important role. Of course, the geometry of the enolates uh, plays a very important role otherwise also that we saw in the Evans oxidolidinone case and other cases. Here in the Ireland Claisen rearrangement how the formation of the uh, enolates uh, is affected by the solvent that we discussed in detail and of course we saw that in Ireland Claisen rearrangement uh, the geometry of the enolates depends on uh, the transition state that we invoke. Now if we uh, see the transition state in a THF solvent then we uh, invoke the chelation between the oxygen and the lithium of uh, LDA and uh, we uh, saw that in order to avoid the interaction between this R2 group and the large group at this particular center, the transition state which is favored would have the smaller group on this side that is the hydrogen on this side. And that leads to the deprotonation of this hydrogen which then leads to uh, the formation of an enolate in which this uh, methyl group and the enolate are uh, trans to each other or this is an E enolate that is formed. But in THF uh, HMPA combination uh, this uh, chelation is not uh, possible because the HMPA removes this chelation and then the deprotonation of this uh, starting material occurs in, uh, in such a fashion that the large group, the methyl group here in this particular case is away from this large group. So this uh, arrangement here is not feasible for the deprotonation because methyl and the large group are uh, uh, on the same side. On the other hand, in this particular arrangement, the uh, methyl group and the uh, this large group are away from each other and therefore deprotonation of this particular hydrogen leads to uh, the enolate to be formed uh, in which uh, the methyl group and the enolate path are actually Z to each other. So therefore, this uh, uh, particular deprotonation in THF HMPA gives uh, Z enolate whereas deprotonation in THF gives E enolate. Then we also looked at the uh, Claisen rearrangement of these two types and uh, some other types. Uh, for example, in this case, if the geometry of the double bonds are different from each other, that means this is Z and E and this is E and Z and they give the same product in which the relative stereochemistry remains the same. Now uh, we also looked at uh, two more examples uh, in which the uh, uh, double bond geometry was uh, changed. For example, here it is trans and here it is cis and there is an asymmetric center which is present and these molecules are chiral. So uh, when uh, this rearrangement is done, we get the products which are uh, having a different uh, stereochemistry at these two centers. Uh, like for example here they are trans to each other and here they are cis to each other or they are sin to anti to each other here sin to each other and the uh, molecules are chiral because starting material is chiral. So we now look at uh, some other aspects of the collision rearrangement. Uh, for example if we do not use uh, the uh, high um, uh, this Lewis acids or uh, such kind of uh, uh, hydro um, hydrogen bonding uh, aided solvents. Then of course uh, we need very high temperature for the Claisen rearrangement to occur. Uh, for example, if we start with a uh, allyl vinyl ether of this kind uh, in which this carbon oxygen bond is beta oriented and heat uh, the reaction mixture at 160 degrees in collidine, then uh, what we get is this particular type of product in which as we can see that the newly formed carbon-carbon bond is also beta oriented because this carbon-oxygen bond was beta oriented. 
Now uh, it means that uh, the chirality here has been transformed uh, to the um, to the corresponding uh, CC bond here. Now uh, if we take uh, um, aromatic lesion rearrangement what we discussed earlier for allyl phenyl ether type of molecules then we can write the mechanism in this particular fashion uh, in which the uh, this particular allyl phenyl ether uh, upon heating uh, would form an intermediate of this particular kind in and where the, uh, the regaining of the aromaticity is accompanied by the formation of the corresponding phenol now uh, from from the starting material as you can see that there is a new CC bond formed at the ortho position. Now if uh, the uh, starting allyl phenyl ether is uh, somewhat differently substituted for example the ortho position are blocked in that case uh, for example here if they are blocked then one can expect that the uh, when the heating is done the um, substituent goes into the para position as you can see here uh, but it proceeds via uh, two types of uh, uh, reactions one is of course the Claisen rearrangement where we can say that okay now this is what is happening here and then you generate a species like this. Now here for the sake of clarity it is written that this particular bond is al alpha oriented but it really does not matter. But supposing if the product does form where is this asymmetric center here has alpha orientation of the allyl group then uh, the it is uh, understood that since it is a, a now it is a cope rearrangement. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is also a, a kind of um, a concerted reaction and therefore this uh, undergoes 3C uh, uh, sigma tropic rearrangement and where there is a retention of configuration here that is what is being uh, said here. Although you cannot really see it in this particular case easily because this will be immediately uh, regaining the uh, aromaticity leading to this particular product. But it implies that, that when we say retention of configuration means that the, uh, the first asymmetric center that is being created if that has a particular orientation alpha or beta then in the next copper rearrangement it undergoes a kind of uh, uh, same uh, with the same configuration and finally uh, enolization leads to the aromatic product. So this is how um, the Claisen rearrangement uh, the original aromatic allyl, eth allyl phenyl uh, ether based uh, aromatic Claisen rearrangement occurs. Very interesting uh, Johnson Claisen rearrangement which is uh, uh, very uh, useful uh, from various angles is like if you start with an allyl alcohol and if we react with this triethyl ortho acetate, this is triethyl ortho acetate. So essentially it is something like this, you, what you have is, is uh, three uh, ethyl ethoxy groups uh, are attached to this. And in the presence of uh, a protic acid as a catalyst at a high temperature if you react it then allyl alcohol uh, basically reacts. Uh, so if you have something like this here then this alcohol attacks because you get protonation of this particular one of the species here and then this goes off and then it will form a, a, an intermediate of this kind which of course will lose proton from here like this and then you get a ethanol loss, the two ethanols are lost and then what we get is a, this uh, allyl uh, like this kind of uh, situation comes in. So this part is, is the allyl part of it and of course the other part is the vinyl ether part. It. Uh, but it is coming from, uh, uh, from a substrate in which you have an extra ethoxy group here or OR group here and when the reaction occurs in a Claisen rearrangement fashion in this way then what you get is uh, uh, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So you get gamma, delta unsaturated, unsaturated 
ester. You start with an allyl alcohol, you add triethyl ortho acetate, triethyl ortho acetate in the presence of an H plus, then you get an intermediate of this kind which of course can be prepared in this way by some other means also, but it is an easy way. And of course, you heat it, then what you get is, is a gamma delta unsaturated ester. Now, there are some very uh, many applications of such kind of uh, um, substrates in the literature and a couple of them we will try and look at it. For example, if you start with a substrate like this and allow it to react under the johnson claisen rearrangement type of conditions, then we expect this type of intermediate to form first, which will undergo Claisen rearrangement to uh, lead to the formation of this gamma delta unsaturated ester. This is alpha, this is beta, this is gamma, this is delta. And the stereochemistry which is shown in the starting material, this carbon hydroxy bond being beta, uh, leads to the formation of this carbon-carbon bond also in the beta orientation. The reduction of this particular aldehyde with sodium borohydride uh, leads to the formation of this uh, primary alcohol which upon treatment with the base allows uh, lactonization to take place and form this kind of bicyclic uh, lactone molecule. Now similarly if we take this type of substrate in which there is an aldehyde group and an enone uh, moiety and reduce uh, under Lucci reduction conditions so that the enone is reduced in preference to aldehyde to form this type of allyl alcohol and this allyl alcohol upon uh, treatment with uh, conditions uh, of johnson claisen type will lead to the formation of this uh, gamma delta unsaturated ester. Again one can see that the carbon hydroxy uh, stereochemistry here was beta oriented and the same one is now here this carbon carbon bond is also beta oriented. Once again we can reduce the aldehyde to the corresponding uh, alcohol and then allow the lactonization to take place in a similar fashion as we did it here to form a bicyclic lactone molecule like this. And uh, the third example illustrates that if we uh, take a allyl alcohol of this kind and uh, treat uh, the uh, molecule under johnson claisen type of rearrangement conditions, then we get this gamma delta unsaturated ester. Uh, now instead of reducing the aldehyde, if we react with say uh, a Gignard reagent like RMGBR, then of course that will first react with the aldehyde because aldehyde is uh, more electrophilic than the ester and then the corresponding secondary alcohol will undergo cyclization to form this type of substituted uh, bicyclic lactone. Now we look at how are these uh, allyl vinyl ether for Claisen arrangements are actually made. So there are some different uh, methods by which these allyl vinyl ethers are made. For example, of course we are talking about allyl vinyl ethers for Claisen arrangement, not for the uh, just John Clay Johnson Claisen arrangement. For example, here if we take an alkyl vinyl ether uh, something like this uh, here like this and if you react with allyl alcohol in presence of H plus as one can anticipate very easily that the protonation of the uh, double bond would occur first with a, with a H plus being here and then of course the lone pair of electron is going to push the electron density here to form an intermediate of this type uh, and, and of course the allyl alcohol will then add on to, add on to this and uh, it would allow uh, R1 to attack it here, then we have uh, uh, that means alcohol will attack onto this and you get uh, OR here and of course uh, methyl group here. And this then under acidic condition again this gets protonated here 
and of course uh, this can push this out or eventually this will push it out and then what you will get is allyl vinyl ether. This is what is this. Of course, in this case this is also going to push it and again that it will uh, deprotonate and finish it off. The other possibility is that, that uh, where the Johnson Claisen rearrangement type of substrate can be obtained is somewhat like this where you can uh, have uh, a kind of selene oxide uh, type of uh, compound to be prepared. In fact, this is a very good uh, home assignment for, for all of you that you can try and see how you can make this small molecule which is um, you know, kind of very useful because if you the moment you do the selene oxide elimination here there is a hydrogen here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 we have discussed this kind of thing where you can anticipate that this comes in here, this comes in here and this goes off and you get this intermediate. Now, this is the same intermediate which johnson claisen rearrangement uh, case it is and therefore you can anticipate that this kind of rearrangement will take place and therefore you have alpha, beta, gamma and delta unsaturated system. Now, uh, there is uh, another way of making allyl vinyl ether which is uh, uh, somewhat uh, more recent uh, is uh, by Buchwald here uh, who has uh, uh, evolved this particular method where he uses the allyl alcohol with uh, vinyl iodide in the presence of uh, cuprous iodide and cesium carbonate and in the at, at 120 degrees with phenanthrolene. So, now this is an interesting reaction how does this reaction occur is something that we need to look at it a little more carefully. So, if we start looking at this way that if we uh, start with uh, a salt of allyl alcohol like this in which M is sodium, potassium or cesium depending on the kind of base that we start with and react it with uh, cuprous iodide then we expect to form this kind of uh, uh, copper 1 species. And now, this copper 1 species reacts with uh, vinyl iodide uh, via this kind of uh, 4 member transition state in which now we form a new oxygen uh, carbon bond and thus copper iodide that is the cuprous iodide then gets released. And this cuprous iodide then acts as a catalyst to continue the reaction in this particular fashion. Alternatively, what has been proposed that this uh, copper 1 species which is formed here reacts with the vinyl iodide in such a fashion that there is first a uh, uh, oxidative addition uh, that takes place to form this uh, copper 3 species and which uh, undergoes a reductive elimination of uh, cuprous iodide uh, and release the allyl vinyl ether. This kind of mechanistic considerations have been uh, discussed in detail in this particular uh, journal Tetrahedron 1992. So, uh, in addition to this uh, there is uh, uh, another rearrangement which is known as Eschen moser claisen rearrangement and that involves uh, reaction of the allyl alcohol uh, like this with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, a species of this kind uh, which upon heating uh, forms uh, this intermediate and this is also uh, having a similar orientation of the double bond. So, this of course goes in this way to form this intermediate which is again like a alpha, beta, gamma, delta unsaturated. Um, amide type of system. So, uh, how does this form and then further aspects of it we will discuss it in the next time, but right now how does it form if this is your starting material where there are 2 dimethoxy and a methyl and N and dimethyl they upon heating in they break off to form this intermediate which then uh, reacts with uh, the uh, this uh, ionic species to form this particular intermediate from where the proton is lost and of course, the methoxide ion which is come out from here then takes up the proton in this fashion and methanol is lost of course and then this is how the 
reaction then uh, leads to the formation of this intermediate which is similar to this intermediate and this intermediate then undergoes uh, uh, kind of uh, clays and rearrangement or uh, we can put the orientation in a slightly different way and then we can say that the reaction occurs to form this particular product. So, uh, this is what is called as uh, Eschen Moser Claisen rearrangement, it has been modified by Eschen Moser and then we will look at uh, some other aspects of uh, the Claisen rearrangement and related uh, reactions uh, next time till then you can uh, look at whatever I have discussed it today and uh, if you have any questions then of course you can keep that in mind uh, and then post it to me when the course is being uh, run and uh, till then uh, take care and bye. Thank you.